Today we'll be speaking with uh, Christian Calderon, who was the Chief Revenue Officer at Ketchup, which was one of the companies instrumental in the growth of hy the hyper-casual games market, and who is now uh, the CEO of a new startup addressing the hyper-casual market called Game Jam. And uh, just to provide a bit more background, however, we've seen the market has evolved fairly significantly since 2013, with a number of key games that focused uh, really on, on gameplay and monetizing through, through ads. In 2018 in particular was a breakout year for hyper-casual games, as you can see from the graphic behind me, that of the top 20 uh, games by downloads in 2018, 15 of those 20 were hyper-casual games, and the number one game, Helix Jump, um, definitely uh, was, was able to generate a massive number of, of installs for that year. Um, and as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Ketchup was one of the key com companies instrumental in the growth of the hyper-casual market. As you can see, they were a uh, top publisher by, by download rank in, from 2014 to 2016, made a big jump in 2017, and then again, 2018 was a year that hyper-casual really blossomed. So it's great that we are able to talk to Chris Calderon, who was the Chief Revenue Officer and a key executive at Ketchup at the time, to talk about the history and the origins of this market. And then also as a CEO of Game Jam, we can talk to him also about the emerging opportunity and how he believes that the market will kind of uh, evolve in the future. So with that, let's jump right in. Hey everybody, I'm here today with Chris Calderon, who is the CEO of Game Jam, and uh, today we're just going to be talking about the hyper-casual games market and Chris's new startup, Game Jam. And so, first of all, um, just talking about the hyper-casual games market, it sort of blew up in uh, last year, and uh, this year it sort of plateaued, but can you just, just tell us a little bit about, you know, where, where did this kind of, where did these kinds of games come from, and how have they been so successful? Yeah, so... I th this game has really kind of been around for a long, long time. Um, you know, early days, Flappy Birds, you know, a game like this could be considered hyper-casual. Um, prior to, to Game Jam, I was a Chief Revenue Officer at Catch App, and we've been making these games since 2014. And uh, in 2000, uh, you know, even in 2014 when we launched uh, 2048, um, 100, basically 100% ad-based ad game, uh, we were a top publisher back to back year to year from 2014 to 2017, getting hundreds of millions of downloads every single year. So in a way, these games have always been kind of popular. Um, I think the, the major shift that happened was probably in 2017, where we saw uh, you know more than 60% of the top 30 games all considered to be hyper casual games, right? And I think this shift came because of, uh, of, of the revenue. Um, I think last year, uh, what a lot of us are thinking is that uh, revenue from ads and games has surpassed revenue from in-app purchases in, in games. Okay. And I think this has become a really huge market opportunity for, for these types of games. Okay. So what are the keys to success in like today's market? Has that changed since 2014 to today? Definitely, it definitely has. Um, so, like, kind of uh, to go back to catch up. Um, I think the, the, for us, we'd look at games. We were just basically looking at something that that felt fun. Uh, to be honest, we didn't really even look at any KPIs in the very very beginning. Just looking at a game if it felt fun, and and then we would we would publish it. Um, as the industry has gotten more competitive. Uh, like all things, we, we, I think everyone's paying a little bit more attention to, to the data. So looking at things like retention, lifetime value, and even now doing user acquisition, which was never a thing in, done in the past with hyper-casual games. And I would say like now definitely you, you need that UA component uh, to scale hyper-casual games, or in the past you, you never really needed that. Okay, in terms of like the key players in the market, I think people may have heard of Voodoo or maybe even Lions to use, but can you talk about you know, who are the top three, four, or five players in the market? And then who do you think is the best position for, for success of, of those sort of top players? Right, so 
I think uh, definitely Voodoo, um, uh, Ketchup, Line Studios. Uh, I think really huge games also is has had some success. Um, but I think probably the top, the ones that are, are, are poised to do really, really well in this market are are the ones that have the capital contribution um, for for user acquisition. So similar to what we kind of saw. In, uh, in in the IP based days, where you know machine zone and, and these kind of big budgets going towards UA, um, I think companies like that who have big bar- budgets for marketing uh, have a lot of potential to, to win out uh, in this market. But then also the companies that have like the the, the expertise uh, behind scaling these games uh, um, economically, um, I. I think th- these guys are, are, are probably the ones best set up to really dominate dominate this market. Got it. And so you were the chief revenue officer at Ketchup, and you kind of left to start your own company. Could you um, just just talk about you know what what what's the specific opportunity you're going after as Game Jam, and, and then what and then what made you decide to kind of leave and start your own company? Yeah. So I uh, the, the opportunity that I saw was that. This is, is pretty, pretty new still. Like yeah. everything is just changing a lot. Um, the, the thing in it for me was, I saw ad spend for mobile was just increasing double digits over time. I think by 2020 it's going to be more than 300 billion, and that ad, this ad revenue uh, contribution for games was, was going to exceed in our purchases at, at a macroeconomic level. And also, like smartphone penetration isn't growing nearly as fast a- anymore as it was, you know, five ten years ago. So the re- ad revenue we're seeing per user is just increasing so much that it's just a huge LTV opportunity for these types of games, and this creates um, uh, the opportunity to to scale these games, uh, different types of different types of games really quickly because as you, as you know for these games the payback window is really short like we're making our money back in, in a week sometimes days uh, or a couple of weeks and it just creates this opportunity to scale a game and make your money back uh, quickly which to me is less risky than scaling a game and making your money back in a year or, or six months um, and so that's what I really really liked about uh, about it um, plus my, my my, my previous history at, at Ketchup and at Dots, um, I felt like I could just go out and you know try to make top games and uh, right. yeah, and see if I can make it happen. And, and just really specifically going back to when you first thought about starting a company, like mm-hmm. could could you just like take us back to like you know were you sitting in a lunchroom, were you driving, and you're just like oh I should and start a company, and then like. How did you, what were the sort of initial steps? Did you talk to a specific partner? Or did you have someone that you were working with? How, how did that sort of happen? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, I think the, the thing, the, the aha moment for me was like, I, I, I need to start my own business, was I was in, um, I'm, I'm, I was in Vietnam, and I saw that uh, uh, basically uh, a lot of these new games were kind of popping up. And I realized at that moment there's there's a huge opportunity here. It's like, it, and if I'm going to do it, I'm going to have to act quickly. And so I just I've always wanted to start my own business, and I thought I have the tools that I need. I've I've done user acquisition before. I know how to monetize games. Um, I have I have a lot of potential to, to to make this type of business. And I thought there wasn't going to be a better moment than than then and there. So immediately, I started working towards towards that. Got it. And your company is based in Vietnam, which I, I thought is pretty interesting. Can you also just talk about the the company itself? Like, you know, how many people do you have? How are they kind of split up amongst different sorts of disciplines or functions? Yeah, sure. So we're about ten people. Um, almost, I guess, everyone's in, in Vietnam, uh, and almost everyone's in, is Vietnamese. I have uh, another. Buddy of mine that works with me, Chris Russi, is our chief operating officer. I work with them at Needham and Company, um, and uh, and then we have a, uh, an artist from the Philippines. And outside of that, everyone is um, is Vietnamese. Uh, and the team is roughly split up. 
half developers, half artists. Uh, and the developers are all pretty much full stack. Uh, one of them is a data scientist, so he works with me specifically on our platform. And then the artists are kind of half and half, 2D and 3D. Um, and so they, um, the 2D team is focusing on things like UI, UX, and any of the 2D components. And then the 3D team uh, also full stack, so we'll have a 3D, a 3D artist that can rig, animate, uh, render, texture, any of that. Uh, he can do everything by himself. Um, so everyone's pretty independent, um, and we kind of work pretty quickly. We, we work within weekly sprints, try to prototype a game within a few days to a week, and, and then test it. Great. And final question, um, do you see any kind of upcoming trends or changes coming to the hyper-casual games market? And I know it's sort of plateaued a little bit coming into this year, but mm -hmm. what's your prediction in terms of where the hyper-casual market goes going into you know, later this year or next year? Right. So... I think the types of games that we've been seeing in the space are pretty much the same, like tons of ball games. Right. And, and so I think the, the, there's a huge opportunity here because the ads LTV for these games are much higher than they ever were before, which, which creates opportunity for different types of games that appeal to different types of people. Um, also, uh, within like tier one markets, we can pretty much assume that um, CPIs are going to increase a little bit faster over time, especially for specific titles where everyone's kind of marketing to the same audience, right? So I think that leaves room for different ways to market the games. A big thing that we haven't really seen done well yet at scale um, uh, in a repetitive fashion is IP uh, well integrated very well into hyper casual games and I think that could be a really big theme uh, for this year and next year um, and to build on top of that games that are you know, hyper casual games that are not ball games or just ad driven 100% ad driven games right. Um, that could be puzzle games, that could be trivia games, that could be anything else that appeal to different types of audiences. And I think we're the hyper casual like market, so to speak, is is growing into these different branches of different types of games because of the LTV capacity and our ability to market to new audiences and new people. Um, so I think that's how the evolution of, the, of this these types of games will, will play out. Okay, great. There you have it, here with Chris Calderon, CEO of Game Jam. That's it. All right, All right thanks. <laughs> <laughs>